Good morning, good morning, welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome, welcome to breakfast with Jesus. Welcome, welcome. Welcome. Hallelujah. Welcome to breakfast. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Good morning, good morning. Hallelujah. Go ahead and share. Welcome. Go ahead and share. Welcome, welcome, good morning. Go ahead and begin to share. Hallelujah. I just came out with a short message. We put this allergy under subjection to the Holy Spirit. We place this allergy right now under subjection to the Holy Spirit. Good morning, wherever you're connecting from. Hallelujah. I can't even roll the windows down because the pollen is so much. So I'm just gonna have to stay in the car. Hallelujah. To God be all the glory, great things you have done. I told you people of God, whenever you don't see me, just pray. I'm good. I'm just, you know, doing the Lord's work. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Brooklyn, New York. Good morning, Trinidad. Good morning, Birmingham, England. Good morning, North Carolina, South Carolina, Pennsylvania, Hartford, Connecticut. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome, 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 welcome to breakfast. I just want to say I thank God for each and every one of you. I just came out to pray a short prayer. Many of us are not receiving in anything from the Lord because of the way we pray. But according to the word of God, Jesus said you have not because you ask not. And we have to pray, my God. He said, until now, you have asked nothing in my name. Ask that you will receive that your joy may be full. Jesus, many of us don't have anything because we don't know how to ask for it. My God. I'm trying to get this phone situated. It's not working properly. Yeah. Jesus said you have nothing because you don't ask in my name. Some people, they get up every day and they pray. It doesn't matter who you pray with. When you don't ask in his name, you won't receive it. He said, no man cometh to the Father but through me. He said, until now, we are in the book of John chapter, oh Jesus, 16 and verse 24. He said, you have nothing because you don't ask in my name. We have to ask in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Whatever we ask, it will be well with us in the mighty name of Jesus. You have to ask in his name, people of God. The reason why there are so much broke Christians these days is because we are not asking in the name of Jesus Christ. 
That's why we are broke. Our daddy is rich. My God. Our daddy is rich. Our father in heaven is rich. Too many broke Christians. Too many, too many sad news. Too many illnesses. Too, too many, too much of everything is going on because we are not asking in Jesus name. We are not. So this morning I came to tell you, Sister Sonia Stevenson, just ask in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth and it will be well in your house. Sister Valdine, ask in the name of Jesus Christ and it will be well in your family. Sister Nelsie Samuda, ask, ask him. He say, ask in my name. My God, he say, ask. Ask in his name. And your joy will be full. You can full joy yourself when you ask in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. My God, Sister Kavin Dixon. Ask in the name of Jesus. Sister Samantha. Oh God, Sister Sherry's ask. He's saying, ask in my name. Ask. I remember a couple of years ago, I went to a conference and um the fasting and prayers was so powerful and they stopped me in the airport because i was traveling on a passport that is canceled my passport is canceled i didn't know because i left the country and people of God, they held me at the airport in JFK. Yes. My God. They hold me at the airport for maybe an hour or so. And I sat there in the airport. I was very quiet because they had me in a room. And I begin to ask in the name of Jesus Christ for whatever the problem is. So they can explain it to me because I don't know. And then they called someone else. And when they called me back at the desk, they said to me, if I have another passport, I said, no. Do you have a passport card? I said, yes. I canceled um, the passport that I had because I changed my name. And I changed my passport and the passport card. The passport card was late. So when I called them, they, they, they canceled the passport. Let me share something with you. Ask. And they released me and told me to go straight to the passport office. So they could fix the problem. Barda Patrol told me the problem is the passport. It has been cancelled. Many people are in prison and they don't know why they are in prison. Because they just were at the wrong place at the wrong time. They got caught. You have to ask in the name of Jesus so you can get to the bottom of the root of the problem. He said, ask in my name. He said, I will make a way where there seemed to be no way. I went and they gave me a new passport the same day. I stayed there a couple of hours at the passport office and they changed my passport free for free. People of God, let me share something with you. Ask in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Sister Jackie, the reason why we don't have certain things is because we don't ask. We ask, but we are not asking in Jesus' name. If you ask in the name of God, you're not going to get it. You have to ask in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. He say you come, but you have to come through Jesus to get to me. He said, no man coming to the Father except you, Jesus Christ. The reason why there are so much broke Christians is because we are not asking in the name of Jesus Christ. We are asking in love. We are asking in faith. But we are not asking in his name. Hallelujah. I, I don't know who the Lord sent me here to talk to this morning. But I came to tell you, it's time you begin to ask. He said, until now, in the book of John 16, he said, until now, you have asked nothing in my name. 
And it's a shame that as Christians we don't know how to pray. That's all it's saying here. We don't know how to pray. We don't know how to express ourselves to God. We don't know how to come before Him. We don't know how to talk to God. Because when we are talking to God, we have to come to Him in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. My God. That's the reason why there are so many Christians lost, looking for all kinds of people to pray. Some of When I was blind, I used to even go to some mad people to pray for me. And I say mad because they don't know how to pray either. We have to know how to pray. Your prayer is a weapon. Your prayer send, send missiles throughout the world. Your prayer tear down barriers. Your prayer break shackles. They were about to put me in jail because the passport that I traveled, that I left the country on was cancelled. It was only God. In that moment, I sat there. And I began to ask. I said, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, reveal this thing to me so I can know what it is. Because I know there is something going on and they can't tell me. Once you begin to ask in Jesus' name, it will be revealed to you. So I encourage you this morning, as you come to breakfast, go ahead and begin to share. Invite someone. I have a quick message. Hallelujah. Yes. I have a quick message. It's short. Hallelujah. Somebody go ahead and begin to share. Glory to God. Somebody go ahead and begin to share this message. My God. Glory to Bakorobo Kosarabakashataya. Somebody go ahead and begin to share. The reason why many of us have nothing is because we don't know how to pray. We pray, but we don't know how to pray. Hallelujah. The reason why some of us are still sick. It's because we don't know how to pray. The reason why some of us are still in bondage is because we don't know how to pray. We are praying but the prayer is not connecting because we don't know how to pray. There is a way that seems right unto man, mighty God. There is a way that seems right unto us. Even when it's wrong, it seems right. Because we don't have knowledge. Lack of knowledge causes people to perish. According to the word of God. Lack of knowledge causes my people to perish. Somebody go ahead and begin to share the word. The reason why we are struggling. The reason why we are telling people that we are surviving is because we don't know how to pray. Christians are not survivors. We are royalty. The reason why we are going through hell is because we don't know how to pray. My God, the reason why we are living the life we are living is because we are disobedient to God. <laughs> yes, that's the reason. The very reason why we are here, most of us here, still on social media looking for a breakthrough because we don't know how to pray. The very reason why God sent me out here today because some of us still don't know how to apply the word of God to our life. Jesus Christ himself said, he said, until now, my God, he said, until now. You see, so we have a no God. We have a no faith that we can activate in our life. Until now. You, Jesus, my God. It means that we have been praying for years and, until, and don't get anything. Some are waiting to be married and still single. In relationship, in good, good relationship and single. Hallelujah. Because we are praying the wrong way. Jesus, give us a point he said, until now, 
you have you have asked nothing in my name some of us the things we have god send people to give us because we still don't know how to pray we don't know how to ask god for for documents we don't know how to ask god for, for, for yes to send love the right people to our life we still don't know how to ask god my god to connect us with the right people to send our destiny help us until now according to the book the book of john chapter 16 and verse 24 it slapped me up my head side i had a revelation that's why i'm out here today he said go and tell my people this is the very reason why some of them are still paying rent go and tell my people the reason why some of them are still living in rented place it applies to my life he said go and tell my people the very reason why some of them have not found a, their destiny help have not located them he said go and tell my people the reason why some still didn't receive healing and deliverance he said go and tell my people the reason why they are still crying at night Mike, because they are lonely it's killing them secretly the very reason why some people have money and they can't spend it because it's set aside to pay medical bills because they are not healed yet and they are in church every day crying out to God praying for the children the children not receiving anything because we don't know how to pray we don't know how to grab the prayer we don't know how to release the prayer and send it up to heaven we don't know how to grab a prayer point and work it. Glory to God. He said, ask and you will receive that your joy may be full. It's not only when Mother's Day come that we should receive a, a gift. It's not only when birthday comes or Christmas or New Year's. We need to apply the word of God to our life. That our joy may be full. The things that we desire, it will come to pass. According to the book of Psalm chapter 34. Delight yourself in the Lord. And he will grant you the desires of your heart. You have to learn how to pray. So you can come out of rent house, rented apartment, so you can stop fighting with your landlord. You have to learn how to pray so you can get a good, a decent job. My God, you have to learn how to pray that your career can take off. You have to learn how to ask in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. So this man will propose so you can come out of this ungodly relationship. You have to learn how to pray that this stomach problem problem can go away you have to learn how to apply the word of god to your life hallelujah it's not a miracle it's not not it's not a miracle you have to pray sometimes god god, god is so compassionate even when we don't pray he will send somebody to fill a need but whatever you desire he wants you to open your mouth and pray and ask in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. He said, ask and it shall be given that your joy may be full. He wants you to full joy your life. He wants you to ebe korobo koraba kashataya. My God, he wants you to have to the full, to live to the fullest. This is why he said, ask and you will receive that your joy may be full. Some of us, the way we live, we pray and we whisper because we don't know how to pray. Declare a thing and it shall be established. My God. The Bible said, declare it. He told, God told Job. Job was wealthy. 
but he was facing hard times because God allowed the devil to touch him because he was materialistic. And when the devil touched him, the devil touched all the way to his bone. I don't know who God sent me here to talk to. He said, the reason why. I'm not here for long because this allergy, I'm outdoors. And this allergy, there it is. That's it. I'm outside. The water is pouring up the hill. I'm tempted to go out there. As you all know me. But my allergy is kicking me. Telemication. But uh, I don't know. I did everything that I'm supposed to do. Thank God I'm breathing. Every year at this time. Hallelujah. Because I'm surrounded by trees. I enjoy Mother Nature. So when you pray, remember me in your prayers. Hallelujah. The reason why, the Lord is saying, the reason why you didn't get the ring that you desire is because you don't know how to, to hold on to those prayer points and release bullets, prayer bullets up to heaven so the enemy cannot stop it. Some of us, our prayers are held back. Why? Because it wasn't strong enough. Our prayer points are weak. Our prayer points are weak. So we can pray effectual prayers. My God, I came to talk to somebody today. I came to stir up your spirit, man. I came to provoke your spirit. The reason why you have not received anything yet is because the prayers that you are sending, it's not going anywhere. You are sending empty bullets. You are sending blank shots. You have a loaded gun, but you're sending blank shots. And therefore the man won't change. And therefore your sister won't change. And therefore your brother-in-law won't change. My God. The reason why. The reason why nothing is happening in your circle. It's because you're not praying effectual prayers. And the Bible makes it clear that the effectual prayers of the righteous avail it much. The reason why there is so much turbulence in your house is because you're not praying in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. He said, you have not because you ask not. And when you ask, you ask selfishly. Glory to God. He said, you have nothing because you ask for nothing. Because when you're praying and you don't ask in the name of Jesus, you're sending blank shots. It can't go to heaven. You cannot send blank shots to heaven. You have to send a loaded gun. A power babuko shataya. I came to talk to somebody today. He said, until now, you have not asked anything in my name. It means that we are lazy in praying. We are some lazy Christians. God is saying that. He gave you everything you need. He said, ask. What is it that you need? Ask in my name. The reason why you didn't get it is because you, you, you're angry. Was it Tuesday? Tuesday we talk about being angry. And what being angry can do to us. We're angry for the wrong reasons. Hallelujah. We are angry for the wrong reasons, Sister Kayan. God is saying here, the reason why we didn't get the breakthrough we are looking for yet. It's coming. Because until Ababoko Shaya, He will prepare you out to pray effectual prayers. So you can get what you're asking for. So you can stop paying rent. So you can move out a family home. So you can So you can do your own thing. So you don't have to report to everybody what you're doing. Everybody don't need to know where you're going. So you can drive your own car. My God. So you can drive to your own appointment. So you can go to the bank on your own. So you can cash those checks on your own. So you can get your checks written in your name, in your company name, in your business name. Glory to God. The reason why things are going the way they are going is because of the prayer 
that you're praying. You're not praying effective prayer. The reason why you're not getting a raise is because you're still not praying the prayers that you're supposed to pray. My God, I came to talk to somebody here today. Glory to God. The reason why some people are going to Obiaman is because they don't know how to pray. The reason why some people are tearing down some doors, hallelujah, that are closed is because they are blind. Some doors were closed in some people's face. And they fight their way back in that place. And they are going to hell. God closed the door. And they kicked that door open. But let me tell you something people of God. He said I will open doors that no man can shut. So if you are knocking on doors. If you are calling these people that have already written you off. God closed the door. It's time to pray. If you look into the book of Isaiah chapter 43 verse 16. He said, Thus saith the Lord, which maketh a way in the sea and a path in the mighty waters. Because God is getting ready to make a way in your life where there seems to be no way. All you got to do is pray. Jesus. <sighs> Some of us are only praying for the last born child. Hey! Ay, 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 ay. And we're not praying for the first born. Some of us are praying for the youngest one because they are young. And we're not praying for the oldest one who is in trouble. My God. Some of us are praying for the youngest child. Or the third child. Or the fourth child. My God, out of the fifth one, we forgot all about the firstborn. If you cannot cover the firstborn, the prayers you're praying for the lastborn is not going to work. Because the firstborn is equally important, even when they have nothing. I, I, I don't know who God is using me to talk to today, but I came to talk to some people. Sister Pauline, the Lord is saying that the reason why we have not gotten what we wanted is because we don't know how to pray. We don't know how to apply prayer to our, listen to me, we don't know how to walk into prayer. We don't know how to apply the word of God into our life, to move into our blessings. My God, I, I, I don't know who is here for this word on time. Because this is a word in time on time. This is a word in time on time. God said I want to make a way for you. Where there seemed to be no way. But you stop praying. The moment you receive that check. You stop praying. Where is your prayer life? Now we are going right back into the toolbox. That you opened this morning. Tuesday we talk about the toolbox. Today I'm here to ask you what kind of toolbox did you open? Is God word in that toolbox? Or is the devil mixture in that toolbox? Because we cannot mix the word of God with the things of the enemy. Or the things of this world. We cannot mix the word of God with the things of this world. We are in the world but we are not of the world. Hallelujah. My God. Jesus. Mighty God. We are in the world, but we are not of this world. We are spiritual beings in this world. I came to talk to somebody today. It's time for you to change up the prayer points. There are some things you have to add to your prayers in order for it to work. God is saying the reason why you're sitting down for so long and asking him to send somebody to give a document is because you're not praying right. Hallelujah. God is saying the reason why people continue to borrow and owe you and you're not getting breakthroughs is because you're not praying. You're just making noise. You're just babbling. You're just talking. Pray. Prayer change things. Pray for your firstborn child. 
if you have more than one kids, pray for the one that was born first. Pray for the one that you gave birth to first. Don't pray for the last one because that relationship that you're in looks good. Pray for your child. Pray for the one that you gave birth to. If you are a man, pray for your firstborn child. Hallelujah. Pray. Release prayer. Powerful prayers in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I release prayers upon my firstborn. Heaven will open up and bless that one in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Oh God, I place that Bakoshada Bakosa Babakosataya before you. Release heaven upon my firstborn in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Release healing upon my firstborn. Release a deliverance upon my firstborn. Right now, oh God, I decree and I declare this word. I ask you, mighty God, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, to release heaven upon my firstborn. You gotta pray. You gotta pray. You gotta pray. You gotta open up and pray. It might seem difficult. Some of you only have one waiting for God to bless you again. But you're not praying for the firstborn. You're just saying some things. You gotta make declarations in faith. Great faith. In the name of Jesus Christ. He said, ask in my name, so your joy can be full. It means that we are not asking in his name. It means that we are not living life to the fullest. If your joy is not full, you're not living life to the fullest. My God. Most of us are praying for the man. We are praying for the wife. We are praying for the husband. But we are not praying for family. What about the children? What about the firstborn? The one that some of us, we call them um, no good. Some of us, we call them idiot. Some, yes, we do. Some of us, we call them fools. Because they make poor choices. They make some choices that we once made. We don't call them that. We don't call them that. Because a half of the time, our children live the life that they saw us living. Hallelujah. Go ahead, people of God. It's time to make declarations over firstborn. It's time to make declaration over that business, that first business that you tried and it didn't work. It's time to go back and, 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 and go to God. Go to the drawing board with the situation. Go to the drawing board with this thing that is bothering your mind. My God, everything else you try work, but that first thing, why? It was God that gave it to you. But you didn't know how to pray about it to keep it. This is why he told Adam. He said, bless it and keep it. When God placed Adam in the garden of Eden, he said, bless it. He didn't, Adam never blessed it to keep it. He allowed the devil to get him kicked out. You see, we take things for granted. And many of us end up being tenants and not landlords. God is saying many of you here today are landlords. But you are still being a tenant because you don't know how to apply the word of God to your life. God is saying many of you here are bosses and managers, CEOs of companies. But you refuse to pray those prayers. You refuse to make declaration. God is saying that you are a boss. But yet still you are knocking on that door trying to get an extra hour from supervisor. God is saying that. It's time to walk out in faith and pray. God is saying that you are healed. But because of your blindness, you, you keep going to this place and that place and asking them to remember you in prayer. God is saying that you are a healer. You are healing hands because he placed healing in your hands. But you are walking around looking for people to lay hands on you. Hey! God is saying that he has given you the babokodoboko sharabaka sataya. But you are disobedient. You are going around looking for everybody to get them involved in that thing. It's time to pray. It's time to open your mouth and pray. It's time to make declarations. Hallelujah. Glory to God.
It's time to mabakurubuku shadabaka sataya. It's time to make declarations. Glory to God. It's time to open up your mouth and declare it in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I will be healed. My child will be delivered and set free in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. My blood will be regulated because many of you here you're sick and it's in your blood. It's in your bloodline. Decree and declare it in the mighty name of Jesus. Regulation will take place in your bloodline. In your blood. Mighty God. This are going in Makoraba Koshakataya. I decree and declare that the blood of Jesus will heal me today. In the name of Jesus. So you have to ask. In the name of Jesus. Jesus. Hallelujah. Mighty God. It is the word of God. He would never send it. If it didn't belong to you. So you are not here on this platform today by mistake. It's no coincidence. It's not a chance. Let me share something with you. It is a word in time on time. My God. It is a word in real time on time. The reason why some people are getting divorced is because they don't know how to pray. The reason why some people jump into marriage is because they didn't want to wait on the Lord. And now they are in chaos. Mm -hmm. The reason why somebody take that job because they refuse to pray. They took whatever showed up first. Where is God in our life? Where is God in our life? The reason why we are stuck at a certain spot. Is because we are lazy to pray. God said he got greater in store for you. Don't settle. The reason why God moved some people out of your life. Is because he wanted to wake up. The reason why God pulled your children away from a certain group of people, from a certain group family, hallelujah. God snatched your children out of Baboko Sataya because he want the best for your children. Hallelujah. So God will turn it around. He said, I'm making a way where there seems to be no way. I am the one that will put mighty God, a river in your desert, in dry place. I will pour water in your life so you cannot be thirsty. Mighty God. He's saying wake up. I'm talking to some lazy Christian. Who refused to make declaration. Because it sounds like you're wicked. Declare it. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. My firstborn will be blessed. And enjoy life to the fullest. Declare it. He said ask. He said until no. He said, until no, you have not asked nothing in my name. It means that you are not praying. You are not working for the Lord. Your prayers are not reaching heaven. And this is why 21 days came and there were no breakthrough. Mighty God, 40 days came. There were no breakthrough. The prayers need to be effective. The effectual prayers of the righteous avail it much. In order for your prayers to be effective, God is saying, it's time to open your mouth and talk to me. God is saying, don't pray the prayer because you hear somebody repeating it. Look into your life. See how you live. Oh God, look into your life and see how you live. And go to God in faith. And declare it in the name of Jesus Christ. And he will make a way where there seems to be no way. Where others fail, you will succeed. Where others fall short, you will have it in abundance. Where others cry, you will dance. Where Baloko Shodoboko Sataya, mighty God. Where others were buried, you will have a garden. I came to tell you, once you begin to apply the word of God to your life, the right way, there is a right way to do things. The Bible said there is a way that seems right unto man. 
when it's not. He said, don't lean to your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him. And he will establish you. He will direct your path. Hallelujah. We have to work the work for him that sent us while it's still daytime, not night. There are some prayers that you pray in the daytime. And there are a different set of prayers that you pray at night. He said, Jesus said, let us do the work of him that send us while it's still daytime. We're talking about the things that Jesus said that needs to be done in our life. There are some people that you don't see them at night. You only see them in the daytime. While there are some people that you only see them at night. He said, let us do the work of him that send us. God is faithful. God is faithful. We serve a faithful God. You see, we complain and say we don't feel well. Many times you see me preaching on Facebook. <laughs> I'm worn out. But I never, I never allow that to stop the work of God from continuing. Yeah. Many times you see me. I'm just doing my best for the Lord. Not for me. It's not about me. So the Lord sent me here to tell you today. The reason why you're still a renter and not a landlord, landlord or a landlady or, yes, a landlady or a landlord. Hallelujah. The Lord of that land, that property. The reason why you're not managing your own property is because you're not pre It's true. It's true. You see, I apply this to my life as well because when I got the revelation, especially talking about our firstborn children, we pray more for the last one than the first one. Why? Because we're praying for protection because the last one is younger. It, that's not how it works. We have to cover the firstborn as much as we cover the last one. Hallelujah. We have to. We have to Sister Marcia Jones. Sometimes they are messy because sometimes, you know, they don't take from us, they take from the Father. So we pray for the ones that look like us. That's not how it works. I, I don't know who God sent me here to talk to today. The Lord want to bless somebody. The Lord want to release some people today. So he sent me here to remind you that the reason why things are not going right, it's because that the choices you make, you select your prayer points according to the life you live. Oh no. Select the prayer points according to the life you desire. Don't select your prayer points based on your current situation because your current situation does not define your future. The reason why we have some people that are still mistreating us is because we think they belong in our life because they're a part of our death, a part of our history. Not because the person is a part of your history makes them to follow you into your destiny. There's not enough room for some of the people that we are harboring, the people that we are pulling along with us. There's not enough room for them into our future. Remember, the children of Israel came out of Egypt through Moses. They never entered the promised land with Moses. Moses' time ended. Some of us, our Moses' time already ended in our life. And it's time for Joshua to take over. And Joshua cannot show up because we are holding on to Moses. Glory to God. Some of us, it's time to make room for Joshua. God wants to send Joshua, but we are holding on to the Moses. We are holding on to Jesus. God is saying that it's time to release Moses. My God. Release Moses. Make room for your Joshua. 
Joshua is your destiny helper, not Moses. Hallelujah. He used Moses to open the doors so they could get out of bondage. They could get out of slavery. But he used Joshua to take them so they could enjoy life to the fullest. Mighty God. Make room for Joshua. Release Moses. Moses' time ended once they crossed the Red Sea. God want to take you into the greater good. Shaddai, I'm laughing because somebody's really receiving their breakthrough right now with this message. God is saying, I'm going to take you to where your heart desire, but you first have to let Moses' hand go. Let go off of Moses' hand. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I'm making room for my Joshua. Alabakosata, because Joshua is the one that will take me to the land of promise. In the name of Jesus Christ, open the mouth and pray, people people of God. Helabako Sataya. God is saying you are a landlord. He's saying you are a manager for properties. It's yours. Glory be to God. He's taking you to another level in your career. Let go off of Moses. Mighty God, it's time to let Moses' time ended, but you are holding on to Moses. And this is why you are in prayer. My God. Hallelujah. Mantarabakush Arabakasataya. It's time to get closer, mighty God, to the word of God, to understand your position. Your position is empty. Your position is vacant. It's time to fill your position. Mighty God, it's time to fill your position. Stop chasing Moses. Moses' time ended a long time ago. You're chasing Moses because Moses was good to you. And God is saying, Moses will never enter the promised land. God is saying you're holding on to the past. It's time to move into your future. It's time to move to the next level. But you cannot go there with that Moses that you're holding on to. God prepared Joshua. No one will provoke Joshua to rot. Moses was easily provoked because he had anger problem. So Moses' time ended. My God, this is too much for Moses. I don't know who I'm talking to, but this is too much for your Moses. Because your God is taking you. Your Moses cannot go there. Moses was not anointed to take you to the destiny. Moses was anointed to take you out of bondage. Hallelujah. I don't know who he sent me to talk to, but I came to talk to some Egyptians right now because you're looking back into Egypt. Moses was like a God in Egypt, but in the wilderness, he failed God. <laughs> it's time to let go off of Moses. Moses failed God. Moses will not only fail you, he also fail God. His time ended. And when you have something that is finished and you try to repair it, it broke again, you try to repair it, it's time to release it. It's time to bury it. It's time to move out of your complacency. It's time to move into the place that God has prepared for you. He said, Behold, I'm sending an angel to take you to the place that I've prepared for you. But don't disrespect him. Don't provoke him. He will not pardon your transgression because my name is in him. It's time for you to open your eyes, people of God. The Bible make it clear in the book of John 16 and 24 that the reason why you don't have anything, the reason why you're still stuck in the past is because you're not asking in the name of Jesus Christ. 
You are under the Mosaic law and it's causing you a problem. You are under the Old Testament. It's Kebe Koroba Koshaya, the old Mosaic law. Now we are moving into the new covenant. He said, this right here is the New Testament. Mighty God, I don't know who I'm talking to, but he's saying it's time to walk with Joshua. Joshua. Somebody say, Joshua, where is my Joshua? Oh God, send me my Joshua in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I am already out of bondage. It's time to enter the promised land. We need our Joshua. Send our Joshua now, oh God. Mighty God. This is why you're here. You go to some church or some programs or some songs. They talk about the Joshua generation. Why? It's because Joshua was the one who took the children into the promised land. So today, we are releasing Moses. Because we are entering into the promised land. And Moses cannot enter the promised land. The land that was promised to us. The things that God have for us. We cannot achieve it by still continuing with Moses. It's time to shift gear. Somebody said it's time to shift gear. The old things that we used to try that work. It no longer work because technology increased. So we have to intensify our prayers. So we can enter into the realms of the spirit. That will take us my God to release our destiny helper. To release our Joshua. So Joshua can locate us. To take us where God wants us to be. Hallelujah. Somebody say, I'm, the reason why I stay so long is because, you know, that was Moses. That was my Moses. That, that's the one who helped me. That's the one who used to help me. Where is Joshua? Make room. Because Moses' time ended once the Red Sea situation was... Once the Red Sea, mighty God, was no longer a blockage, Moses' time ended. So anybody could provoke Moses and get away with it. My God. I came to talk to somebody here today. Who do not understand who they are. The reason why you don't have anything is because you're not praying. Yes, you're, you say, our oh, father, but where is Jesus Christ? Our oh, father. Declare it in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. My God, declare it. He will do the rest. Declare what you need. Release it. Your word is a seed. The word on your lips is a seed. The word on your lips is your bond with God. When you break your bond, when you say you're going to do something and you don't do it, you're breaking your bond. Your word is your bond. Release your seed out there in the atmosphere. Decree and declare it. God sent me here today to give you this word. To bless your spirit. So you can remember your firstborn. So you can remember how to declare a thing. For it to be established in your life. So you can release that Moses. The man who dig the foundation is not the man who paint the house. The man who dig the foundation is not the one who sell you the house. The man who break the first ground is not the person that will write the check. Glory to God. It's time. It's time for your Joshua to enter your life. It's time to go forward. If you're just joining, welcome to Breakfast with Jesus. It's time to go forward. It's time to let go of the past. The reason why some people are still complaining. The reason why some of us are still borrowing and begging. Is because we are holding on to the past. And it's hopeless. It's time to make room for Joshua so we can enter into the promise that God has for us. My God. The reason why some of us are still tenants is because you're stubborn. We love the area. Leave Moses alone.
The word of God is active and alive right here. Stop making excuses to pray. Stop making excuses, people of God. And declare in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Oh God, send my Joshua. He said, until now you have not asked anything in my name. It means that the whole time you're praying from the book of Genesis all the way to the New Testament. Matthew, Mark, and Luke. So when you get to the book of John, he said, let me tell you a secret. The reason why you didn't get anything is because of the way you pray. My God, what a revelation. The reason why Sister Ayacinth, we didn't receive the thing to do the stamp is because of the way we pray. Our mindset. Our mindset. We are praying. In, we are praying about the past. We need to pray about the future. We need to come out of complacency. We need to come out of the past. And pray about our future. Whatever happened is behind us. Sister Tanya Lee. The things that happened in the past. We need to pray for God. To pave the way. To send Joshua. We are not praying for God to open door for Moses. Moses time up long time ago. Yes. We are asking God. To reign. In our desert. So Joshua. Won't be thirsty. Because we need Joshua. My God. We need Joshua. Everybody need Joshua. Everybody need a Joshua, Sister Kay and Sister Debbie. We all need Joshua because Joshua is the one that will be obedient to listen to God and ignore our ignorance. Our ignorance caused Moses to sin. Our ignorance caused Moses to fall short. Our foolishness. My God. So we are praying for God to send Joshua. Because Joshua will listen to God and not listen to us. Joshua will not take advice from us. He will take it from God. That was the problem that Moses had. His feelings. They upset his feelings. So he act on his feelings. Mighty God. Mighty God. That's why. That was the reason why. We need our Joshua. Because Moses. Moses was too compassionate. He was in his feelings. And he acted on his feelings. Based on what the children were prompting. They prompted him to sin. But Joshua will not listen. Joshua listened to the voice of God. Only the voice of God. So we need Joshua. Even when we are crying. Joshua will make sure we get to the place that God has prepared for us. Even when we are bawling. Joshua will make sure he listens to the voice of God. God knows what's best for us. And this is how we drop right down into the book of Jeremiah chapter 3. He said. I will give you pastors according to my heart. So God is saying, he want to send Joshua. But we are holding on to Moses because we said Moses did some good for us in the past. We don't forget where we came from. Hey! Don't forget where you came from. But look, you can't stay where you're coming from. You have to go straight. You can't go back. There is no turning back. He said, behold... I will, I'll send you an angel to fix things ahead of you, not behind you. We're not looking back, we're looking ahead. So if you're a teacher, expect to be a professor. If you're a nurse's aide, expect to one day wear that white gown to be a doctor. We are going forward. If you're a tenant, expect one day, my God, to be a homeowner, to be a landlord. We are going forward. There is no turning back. 
We're not going to downsize to please Moses. No, it's time to go forward. If you are an illegal immigrant, get ready to travel the world. Get ready to be a CEO of a company that they don't, they don't acknowledge your, your work. It's time to move forward in life, people of God, and don't settle. If you have friends and it's only to make you feel important, get ready to be a life coach. Get ready to be a life coach if you're looking for friends in high places. If you are paying just to be in a group of people, it's time for you to invest in yourself. It's time for you to invest in yourself. My God, you don't have to pay to be in groups of friends just to feel like you belong. God said, I already set you apart. God said, I already set you apart. You don't belong in that group of... Some of us, we are forcing ourselves to be in some friendship with some people that are dealing in witchcraft, that are digging in sin. That No! God said, I already set you apart. God said, I already set you apart. God said, I already set you apart. You're different. My God, the Levites were set aside for service because they were different. Not everybody will be able to stand you because God already set you apart. They won't be able to handle you because God already placed something inside of you. Don't fight to be in any group of people that don't accept you because God already set you apart. Don't force yourself into a place that you don't fit. God already set you apart. You're different. You're different. Cry out to God to send Joshua so you can go into the place that God has for you. Don't go back. Being with Moses uh, is, is just going to keep you back. To remind you that you were once a slave. To remind you when you had nothing. That's all that's going to happen. To remind you. I don't know if anybody here. They, uh, they keep reminding you when you were nobody. When you didn't have anything. When you couldn't afford a good pair of shoes. When you were living and taking your shower in wash tub. My God I came to talk to somebody. Those are the days that's behind you. It's time to move forward. <sighs> it's time. God is saying, I'm not giving you a pool. I'm giving you a river flowing. I'm not giving you a pool because the pool water is stagnant. I'm giving you a river flowing, fresh, clean water. Glory to God. God said, I'm blessing you in abundance. Get ready to be blessed. Once again, I just want to say, it was breakfast with Jesus. People of God, you know, we just have to be obedient to the voice of God and do his will according to the Bible in the book of John chapter uh, 16 and 24 it said that until now we have not asked anything in the name of Jesus Christ and we need to ask so our joy can be full God wants to bless us but we are not praying we are lazy Christians let us stop being lazy Christians according to the book of Isaiah it tells us that he is the one who provided a highway in the river, in the ocean that we could cross over into our destiny. God wants to bless us, people of God. It's time for us to open our eyes. When people keep reminding you of your past, it means that they have not, they're, they're in bondage. They don't see where God is taking you. That's, that's how much they can see. It means that their time expire in your life. Once they begin to remind you of your past, that is all they can remember about you. It means that they don't see where God is taking you. Because to tell me, tell me about my, I know where God take me from. You don't have to remind me. So I know where God is taking me because he's taking me away out of your presence. Because all you see and remember about me is my past. It means that you cannot see into my future. God is saying he's taking you far. 
and the people that's reminding you about when you used to have nothing, when you couldn't afford to pay to buy a good shoe, when you couldn't afford to pay to wear good clothes. That means they only see you off because they are still in the past. You need the people around you to take you to where Joshua can say, thank God, this is it. There is no turning back. Life goes on, people of God. We don't need nobody to remind us of our past. He said, remember when you were in sin, I took you out. So because you are no longer in sin, why, you would, why want, would you want to go back? Why would you want to revisit your past? Everybody have a Moses. And when Moses' time ends... There is a Joshua. But if you keep holding on to the things of the past, you're holding on to your Moses. We can't continue to hold on to Moses. Joshua is waiting for us. He's a soldier. He's prepared. He's ready. He might not look like Moses. He might not stutter like Moses, what we are used to. Some, some of us, we don't want to deal with certain people because we're not used to what they came with but God said he prepared them to to help us so why why should we resist we're not going to resist good things don't resist what God has done. there is a reason hallelujah there is a reason glory to God there is a reason Jesus I encourage somebody right now to go ahead. This message is a deliverance message. Glory to God. I encourage you to go ahead and share it and say, release Moses. Release Moses because Joshua is on his way. You cannot accept Joshua if you're still holding on to Moses. You cannot accept a new one if you're holding on. If your hands are full, you, there's no room to take anything new. If your hands are full, some people, their hands are tied with the things of the past. They remember, oh, Pastor Ratigan, Reverend Ratigan. I remember Reverend Ratigan when she was walking and didn't have a car. I remember Reverend Ratigan before she started preaching. That was my past. Deal with what you see. Look what's in front of you. This is not your past. This is what God has reconstructed. He changed the wrapper. He changed the bag. I outgrow that old bag. I have some room around me. My clothes is not tight anymore. God changed me. Allow God to change you. Allow God to fix you. Whatever you did in the past, don't continue to do it. There is room for growth and deliverance. There is room for growth and development. Somebody said, I'm taking that word and I'm running with it. <laughs> it is the word of God. He said, until now, you have not asked anything in my name. So God wants to bless us so bad. Till he reminds us in the scripture that until now, after all this time of crying out that you're a child of God, you baptize, you're born again, you're praying in tongues. Until now, you don't receive anything good because you didn't ask for it in my name. So whatever you receive is what God sent to bless you with. You still haven't prayed the prayer to open the doors. Hallelujah. My God, we need our Joshua. We need our Joshua. We need to let Moses go. Let go of the things of the past. Let go of the things of old. He said, behold, I will make all things new. He said, remember not the former things. Yes, we're in the word. He said, remember not the former things. It's a sin to dwell on somebody's past. It's a sin. He said, behold, I have made all things new. Behold, look, open your eyes, pay attention. Gone are the days of old. He said, behold. Look at this beauty before you. The word. 
is beautiful in all description. God is beautiful in all description. And what he's saying here, open your eyes, people of God. Look around you. Ten years ago, you would not accept this word. But because of what you have gone through, would allow you to pay attention to the word. Welcome, 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 welcome to breakfast with Jesus. Welcome all. Stop holding on to the past. There is room for growth. There is room. Look around you. You're not wearing those ugly shoes anymore. He made your feet beautiful. The Bible said, beautiful are the feet. How lovely are the feet of them that bring forth the good news. It said, your feet is beautiful. The book of Isaiah tell, it said, oh, beautiful, mighty God, how lovely are the feet of them that bring forth good news. It means that your feet is beautiful. Hey, hallelujah. The word of God put us in a spot so we can acknowledge who we really are in Christ. When you bring the word of God, your feet is beautiful. Oh, lovely are. The feet of them that bring forth good news. Announcing peace. Proclaiming happiness. Hey, Bakushataya. Our God reign. God clean our feet. This is what the word of God is saying in the book of Isaiah. How lovely are the feet of them that bring forth the good news. Announcing peace. Proclaiming news of happiness. That our God reigns. God want to fix your life. He wants you to open his toolbox. It's time to open God's toolbox. And not Satan's toolbox. The box, the toolbox is the word of God. Let's open God's toolbox. Hallelujah. And decree and declare. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. That our Joshua will come to take us. Into the place where God wants us to be. Not where we desire to be. Where God wants us to be. God is fixing people in this time. To take us. To the next level. So I encourage you, my brothers and my sisters, if this message is yours and it bless your spirit, you can go ahead and be a blessing to the ministry so we can continue bringing you the word, of the powerful word, the anointed word of God. There's nothing else here. All we have here are the things of God. No flesh. No flesh. No bakuraba kasataya. No flesh. My God, no flesh. It's the word of God. It's all about Jesus. It's all about Jesus. No flesh. Flesh is under subjection to the Holy Spirit. Flesh is under subjection to the Holy Spirit. So I pray today. That you begin to pray in the name of Jesus. You begin to ask whatever you need. If it's, if it's love you're looking for. You ask in the name of Jesus Christ. If you're looking for beautiful feet. According to the book of Isaiah. You ask in the name of Jesus. Because when you bring the word of God. Your feet will be beautiful. You say. God never. None of the scriptures will lie to you. How lovely are the feet of them that bring forth the good news, announcing peace, proclaiming news of happiness. Our God reigns. So just know that. If you didn't know, you know now that your feet will be beautiful. If you didn't know, you know now that the reason why you don't have certain things is because you didn't ask in the name of Jesus Christ. You have to. He says, seek and you will find. Knock and it will be open. 
ask in the in my name he said ask in my name and it shall be given unto you so when you ask in the name of jesus he said that means you're supposed to pray that's why he said in his name he didn't say go beg and said the bible said ask and it shall be given he said ask in my name meaning that go to him in prayer and he will release it to you even if it's gonna come from a neighbor who don't like you go to him in prayer ask in his name and that neighbor will knock on your door and hand it to you because you went to the lord sometimes the things that we are asking for it's not coming from too far some of us are looking for it to come from foreign country or overseas no god is gonna use somebody right there near you to bless you sometimes it will come from far when those close to you are disobedient hello hello somebody the word of god never lie it never lie god cannot lie because he's a spirit according to the book of numbers chapter 23 and verse 19 the word of god said god is not a man so he won't lie he's a spirit whatever he said is gonna happen this is why when we come we have to come in prayer God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. And this is when you know that if you're not saved, you have to give your life to the Lord. Because he's a spirit. He's not a man. Hey, thank God for this word. Lord, we thank you for this word. Thank you for the heart that it will touch today. Thank you, Lord, for the people that continually come in to hear your word. Bless them today, O oh God. Remember them as they pray in your name. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, their prayers will be answered according to your word. We say thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. It is well. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray with thanksgiving. As this word touch your people and touch people across the nations to bless them. To release them to set them free to give them a reason to pray amen this message will give you and your family a reason to pray so I encourage you to share it this message will give you and your family reasons to pray so I and friends go ahead and share it and watch what God will do. Sister Maxine, all the way over there in Germany. Welcome. I miss you. The word of God has come to pass. I know you would come back on this platform to testify. God said it last year. No, God said it a year and a half ago. And you are back with testimony. Who could it be but Jesus? Somebody called me. Um, somebody called me. I received a phone call. From a young woman she was in Jamaica it's a testimony she was in Jamaica living in Jamaica and um, she received an opportunity to travel to the United States and she called me and she said should I come to the United States I said yes the Lord said come when she came she was with some people who only promised her to help her to find something to do with her life and um, no efforts were made to help it was just promises and we prayed she came to church she met me in person she wanted to meet me she came to church and we prayed and when we prayed God opened a door and she have a job and it's been a while now she got that job and God have been using her along with this ministry to open doors for other people so you see from jamaica to america from america now she's getting ready to sort out our, herself another one two years ago when we just started here on social media she she was on the live and the lord released a word the word was for her and her mother after the live, she called me she's a woman of god it's true but i'm shamed I didn't want to come on and speak because i'm ashamed of my condition but i'm gonna go to america and the Lord began to use me again to talk to her. Last week, she sent me a message. 
She said, woman of God, everything that you said came to pass. I have my 10-year green card in my hand. People of God, listen to me. God is here on this platform. She said, woman of God, everything that you said to me came to pass. I have my 10-year green card in my hand. I can't give a word. God speak. Because when you believe, it will come to pass. If you're here in doubt, all you will do is watch other people's testimony and read it. But I just want you to know when you ask in the name of Jesus Christ and you're obedient to God. These are people that came to the platform. And God used me to minister to them and give them instructions that they obey. It's all about Jesus. It's all about Jesus Christ. We don't use anything here except the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. So if this message has blessed you, you can go ahead and bless the ministry. You can use PayPal, Cash App, or Zelle. If you are in a foreign country and God touched your heart to bless the ministry, you can contact me at 860-634-8557. Contact me on WhatsApp and I'll tell you what to do. But in the meantime, my time is up. I love you with the love of the Lord. I will continue to be here. But it's allergy season. Amen. And I am staying out of the pallet. This has been going on since I was a kid. Every year at this time of year, my allergy acts up. But I'm, it's in control now. Because I can breathe last year this time. I couldn't breathe. I could only breathe to preach. But thank God for his goodness. And thank God for wisdom. And thank God for a few nurses that are in my life. God have blessed me. <laughs> God have blessed me. I'm not taking any prescription. And I understand that the prescription allergy medicine is good. But I thank God. You know, God have really blessed me. With some good people with guidance because I'm very humble and I'm obedient people of God my time is up I have to go if the Lord touch your heart to bless the ministry I pray that it will return to you in a thousand folds whatever you release to the ministry it will come back to you you can go ahead and be a blessing if God touch your heart because I know this message is blessing people I know he's using this platform to open in doors in other people's lives I know a lot of people have been receiving blessings secretly but they said they're not releasing any funds into the ministry but God bless you and God bless your testimony Amen. We will we will have a day later on this month. People will come out and share their testimony. And I will try my best. I will try my best to set a day so this thing can happen. And remember, people of God, on the 15th of every month, we do charity. We bless three people. We bless three people with cash that we collect from this platform. Amen. So we are asking for your help to bless the ministry that on the 15th, it's usually on the 15th of the month that we release the funds to do whoever God selected. So three people will be blessed. For three people. One is the ministry and two others will be selected to be blessed with the cash that we collected. I encourage you people of God to send off your donations to charity. Hallelujah. Just write charity when you send it. Western Union, you can try MoneyGram, whichever way, wherever you're located. But cash, PayPal, or Zelle. My time is up. I have to go. Be blessed of the Lord and be of good courage. Your blessing is on, the, on its way. Your testimony is sure. Release Moses and make room for Joshua. And be obedient because Joshua was very disciplined. Amen. God bless you all.